Hey, good evening. Today's Bible study comes from Mark chapter 10, verses 35 through 45, and it reads as follows. Then James and John, the sons of Zebedee, came to him. Teacher, they said, we want you to do for us whatever we ask. What do you want me to do for you? He asked. They replied, let us sit at your right and the other at your left in your glory. You don't know what you are asking, Jesus said. Can you drink the cup I drink or be baptized with the baptism I am baptized with? We can, they answered. Jesus said to them, you will drink the cup I drink and be baptized with the baptized I am baptized with. But to sit at my right or left is not for me to grant. These places belong to those who have been prepared. When the ten heard about this, they became indignant and with James and John. Jesus called them together and said, you know that those who are regarded as rulers of the Gentiles lord it over them, and their high officials exercise authority over them. Not so with you. Instead, whoever wants to become great among you must be your servant, and whoever wants to be first must be slave of all. For even the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve, and to give his life as a ransom for many. Now, this is known as the request area of, John, of James and John. And James and John probably didn't truly understand what they were asking for, but then it says, Then James and John, the sons of Zebedee, came to him. Teacher, they said, we want you to do for us whatever we ask. And they were coming to Jesus with a question. They wanted something. And it was pressing because they didn't tell him straight up. They they wanted him to give him a, give him an answer of that yes I'll do it. But Jesus said, "What do you want me to do for you?" He asked, and we know that Jesus knew what was in their heart. But he asked them that, and they replied, "Let one of us sit at your right and the other at your left in your glory." Now, when they speak of in your glory, that means in heaven. That means where Jesus is sitting at the right hand of God. They are requesting to be in those places. Well, Jesus tell him, tells him a couple things. He says, first, you don't know what you were asking because they didn't know what they were asking. They didn't know and didn't understand that those areas are already taken care of. They are already situated. And the true part of their statement when they said, uh, let one of us sit at your right and the other sit at your left in your glory, well, truth of the matter is, we all want to sit on the right, and we want it to be in glory, but we don't have to be right next to the Lord. We just want to be there. We want to be in heaven. We want to be in the glory. We want to be with the victory. So, Jesus tells them, you don't know what you're asking. Can you drink the cup I drink or be baptized with the baptism I am baptized with? And he asked them a question, and they said, yeah, we can do that, they answer. Jesus said to them, you will drink the cup I drink and be baptized with the baptized I am baptized with. So they will do that. But to sit at my right or left is not for me to grant. That was not Jesus' ability to grant. It was God's ability to grant, or the Father's ability. And if you read in Revelations, it tells you, who will be around the throne and who was seated where. The Lord has already destined those places and those seats and those setups in heaven already. So Jesus was telling them, my father has already set this place and set it established in the city that he wanted. So what you ask for is for me to go against my father or to speak on things that I cannot speak upon as having authority over them. And it says, these, he says to them, these places belong to those for whom they have been prepared. So these places that they speak of have been prepared for somebody else or some other beings. And like I said, if you read in Revelation, you will see what it says. And when the ten heard about this, they became indignant with James and John. They were really saying the nerve of you, the audacity of you to go up and ask a question. And it kind of put James and John as thinking they were above 
the others because to ask a question like that was really, really, really placing yourself somewhere you shouldn't have been. We all just want to make it to glory. We don't have to be sitting right next to him. But trust me, the radiance that you will see and the light that you will see and the spiritual feelings that you will have, you could be in eternity and you'll feel it. This is not going to just be right up on you. You will be able to feel it from anywhere. And they were bothered. They, the, the ten heard about it and they were bothered with it. Why would you ask something like that? And Jesus called them together and said, you know, and he, he puts it in a way that they can understand it. You know that those who are regarded as rulers of the Gentiles lord it over them, meaning they keep it upon their head. They tell them about it. And their high officials exercise authority over them. So they are running things. They are letting them know who they are, that they're the big shots, that they're this and that, that you are only Gentiles. We have this. You do not have that. They are letting them know. And then he says, not so with you. Instead, whoever wants to become great. And this goes back to John and James' question also. Because he says, Instead, whoever wants to become great, because they were putting themselves somewhere they shouldn't have. So if you want to become great, among you must be your servant. Whoever wants to be great must be the servant. You must serve the other. This was, this was pretty hard because James and John had put themselves out there and up there. But Jesus said, whoever wants to be great, got to be a servant. And whoever wants to be first, uh-oh, here's another thing. Whoever wants to be first must be a slave of all. Wow. So in both instances, not only are you a servant, you are a slave, which is a servant that does exactly as they are told to do. For even the Son of Man, and this is where Jesus puts the true perspective on, where he was going, who he was, and how things are supposed to be. And he says, for even the Son of Man did not come to be served. I did not come to be placed on a pedestal, to be served, to be any of this, because all the glory goes to the Father. I am here as a servant, and I didn't come here to be served. I came to serve. And when I came to serve, it was and to give my life as a ransom for many. So once again, here's Jesus being the leader that he is, utilizing his servitude and obedience to the Father and telling them, for even the Son of Man, for even I, the one who is doing all these things, teaching all these things, I just came to serve y'all. That's it. I didn't come to get served. I came to serve you. And then, on the service that I give you, I'm going to even do one better. I'm going to die for all of you. For all of you. I am the payment for all of your sins. None of mine. I didn't have any, but all of yours. And that's because John 3.16. And when he loved the world, he sent me. And I was the one that was telling you. I'm the one that was speaking, John 3.16 and 3.17. That was Jesus Christ. And he was letting you know that his father sent him to do this. So he was being an obedient servant unto his father to save us. So Jesus let John and James know, hey, if you want to be first, that means you really got to be last here on earth and you are to be a servant to the people to your brothers and sisters don't think of yourself highly think of yourself lowly where you can serve them even when Jesus washed the disciples feet he was showing them humility and humbleness and if he can do that we can do anything to serve somebody else. Amen.